Hey, Mike, am I on? Can I be heard? Okay. I can't see the button. There's a reason for that. But I'm going to give you all a little warning since the question's already been asked. Are we going to get out early? Well, let me tell you, the preacher forgot to tell me I was on a time limit. And as I told some of them, I can't read that clock on the wall. Because my wife says you need to go to eye doctor and I don't believe it yet. So I can't read the clock. So I hope everyone had a good nap this afternoon. We may be a while. He's going to wish he did not release the beast. If you got your Bibles tonight, turn to Psalms chapter 92. Psalms chapter 92. I'm going to preach just on this concept. And I'm going to keep it as simple as I can keep it. Because I don't feel like it was something in depth. I feel like God gave this to me as soon as the preacher asked me to step in tonight. It's just this. Are we going or growing? Are we going or are we growing? Oftentimes, we get stuck in this thing of going to church. Of going to church. And I'm going to say something tonight that I make no apologies for. And when I say it, I want you to hear me out to the end. And my thing tonight is just this, before I say that. If you take what God's got tonight and apply it, 10, 20 years down the road, you can look back tonight and say, that's the night my life changed. That's when things got different. That's when I got a hold. It's time that we stop going to church. Oh, did Tony just say that from the pulpit? It's time to stop going to church. We talk about we go to the movies, we go to the ball game. We go wherever. We go to lunch. When I go to the movies, I don't feel invested there. My pocketbook feels invested there. You know, you had to apply for a loan just to buy a popcorn. And that's the small one. I buy a small popcorn and immediately my bill collector calls me and says, you weren't supposed to do that. But you're not invested. And that's what's wrong with our churches today. That's what's wrong with Christians today. Is all we're doing is just going to church. And God's highest highest calling on your life isn't to go to church. God's highest calling on your life is to be rooted and plant it in church. To be rooted in church and to be planted. So I go back to my title, it's just this. Are you going to church or are you growing in church? And I asked that because I had to watch the sermon on video this morning. Because I hung out with the wild children this morning. I love your children. And you're welcome for any parent that got the kid after I had them. They love them two cupcakes this morning. (laughs) And juice. I will sugar your kids up every time I have them. That's a disclaimer that I'll tell every time. This morning's service was great. Ken done an awesome job. That youth done an awesome job. And yes, I am partial to the youth department. Okay? But here's what I want you to realize. Some of them that come to watch this morning just came to church. 
They took nothing when they walked through them double doors. Is that what we're doing every week? Are we just going to church? Are we planning? Let's look at verse 12, chapter 92. And the righteous, righteous shall what? Flourish. Flourish. That doesn't say the righteous will just get by. It says it'll flourish. Big things happen. Now I know it sounds odd. That's not a word that we use often. If someone asks you today, well, how are you doing? You're not going to say, hey, I'm flourishing. How was yesterday? I was flourishing. I think we should start using it after tonight. You want to get somebody's attention, tell them you're flourishing. I hate for somebody to say, I'm doing okay. I started a thing telling people I was magnificent. How you doing, magnificent? What? I'm magnificent. Look it up if you don't know what it means. I don't know what it means either. But I'm going to start telling everybody I'm flourishing. I'm sure that's going to come with some other fat jokes. Because every time you see flourishing in the Bible, it does say fat and flourishing. You know, what's that mean, Mike? It means you're doing well, right? I'm doing good. So good I can't tighten my, my buttons don't reach. The righteous shall what? That's a word I want you to put in your vocabulary going forward. Like a palm tree, he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. I want you to realize this. One, we need to be flourishing. And you can only flourish one way, and we'll see that as we go. But it says, he compared this to your flourishing, in which you should be like a palm tree and a cedar. A cedar tree is very durable. It's so durable, let's go back and look. Solomon, when he built the temple and all that, the beams were in columns and roof were made out of cedar because it was meant to last for centuries. It was meant to hold up. Not to mention, cedar smells great. Some of y'all remember old cedar chest. Years later, 50, 60, they smell good. They're attractive. Cedar is just some of the most beautiful wood. But then he said palm trees. To realize that palm, the palm branch is a symbol of triumph and victory. In Roman, the Romans were awarded in the Olympian as champions. They would give palm branches. It's basically like their gold medal. When Jesus entered into Jerusalem for his triumphal entry, what did they weigh? It's okay if y'all talk to me now. It's okay. What did they weigh? Palm branches. It's a sign of victory. So not only does he tell you you're going to be flourishing, but you're going to be like a palm tree and grow like cedar and you're going to be strong. But I also want you to realize these, both of them are evergreens. And if you don't know, evergreens are thriving, but they produce all year long. They wanted a few trees that produce all year long. I don't want to be a maple tree. I thought about this because I knew my message. Ken talked about maple trees in Sunday school. You're not going to see them little acorns in January. You know? But I can tell you, you find a palm tree, you're going to see nice pretty palm branches all the year long. A cedar is going to look pretty all year long. Flourishing should make you victorious all year long whether you're in the valley or on a mountaintop and as far as I'm concerned and I had this conversation with someone else recently if we're Christians we're never in the valley because this valley is how you view your life you can make every valley a mountaintop that's another lesson for another month verse 13 those that are planted in a house of what? shall flourish. It doesn't say 
if you go to church, if you show up at church and occupy a half an inch of seat or four foot of seat, we can figure out who's doing what. It doesn't say that you'll be flourishing, does it? You've got to be planted. If you want to flourish in the Lord, it's time to get planted. I want to look at the definition of flourishing. Did I give that to you, Ken? Okay, that's good. Definition of flourishing. I felt I added that earlier. To be in a vigorous state, to thrive, to prosper, or to thrive in growth. Is your Christian life, do you feel that you're growing? Do you feel like you're getting stronger? Or do you feel like you're just getting through? Unfortunately, so many of us don't experience these good things. Instead of flourishing, we're, we can look back and say we're spiritually dry. We have trouble thriving because we feel like we're emotionally withering. We can't connect because relationally we're barren. We're not prospering financially because we're too stressed or don't know what to do. We don't feel fulfilled because we're searching for other things. I want you to realize your life is a seed. Your seed. And just so you know, a seed has a lot of potential. So every one of you, whether you're as small as Aaron, or as mean as Gary, or as ugly as Brandon, we're not even going to get on this you have potential. I don't care your age. I don't care how smart you are. I know most of you are smarter than I am. But you have potential. But a seed must do what? To grow. It must be planted to flourish. For a seed to grow, it's got to be planted. A seed will not grow without being planted. Your life has the potential to grow, multiply, thrive, and bear fruit. Your life is not meant to be unfruitful, lie dormant, unproductive, or bearing at all. Your life was meant to be fruitful. Over Matthew chapter 13 he was talking about a farmer and as he was sowing he went out to sow or to plant some seed and the sower threw seed out and some of the seed fell on a path on a hard ground and since there was the seed couldn't ever take root birds come along and stole the seed that seed never reached its potential some seeds fell in shallow soil and so it spurted up but because the roots never grew deep Whenever the sun beamed down, it withered up and died immediately. But those who plant it in good soil reap a harvest. So those that are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish. Where are you planted? Going to church is not the same as being planted. You can come to a building. You can occupy space. But your life will never grow. You'll never get to where you feel like to your full potential until you get planted in, into God's house and into His Word and into groups. So we need to stop going to church and we need to get planted. Some of us go to church to experience God's presence. We're changed. A few years later, we're not involved or we only show up at Easter or Christmas. We become spiritually shaky. 
You cannot become spiritually strong only showing up to church part time. I appreciate those that are listening online and those that are watching via Facebook, listening via the radio. And I understand some can't be here. But the ones that can be here are missing the flourishment and the potential of their life with God. I make no apologies because if you're not here and you can be here, you're not hurting me. You're hurting yourself. If you want a stronger foundation, you've got to root your life in Christ. You've got to root your life in church. That doesn't mean I want someone to show up next week and say, hey, look, Tony, I showed up. I'm here. I'm going to be like, that's good. I got to listen to the message. I love you to death. I'm glad you're here. And don't come because of me. Because I'll fail you. Don't ask my wife. I'm going to make mistakes. Again, don't ask my wife. But I'll tell you this. No matter how many times I fall down and how many times God has to pick me up, that if I'm not planted right here and I'm not in my word, then I, I, I'm missing out. But every time I've gotten my word and God's picked me up and I realize where my roots were, hard times weren't that hard. When your roots run deep, it will change your hard times. God never promised that everything was going to be nice and pretty and rosy for you. But he promised he would never leave you, forsake you, forever. So if he's not going to leave you or forsake you, why are you leaving him by not coming? And by not getting rooted? There's a hole there that I'm about to step in. Mike really don't want me to tear up no sound system. Here's the thing. I say this because I love you. But some of us are just coming to church to say, I was there. And you're wasting your time. I can check your box. You want me to sign off so you can tell your neighbors you showed up for church this week? I'll sign the paper for you. It's what you take when you leave this building. We're not called to be the we're not called to come to church. We're called to get rooted and planted in the church so when we go out, we can lead others. And let me tell you something. It's hard to invite somebody to revival. when you're not rooted because you're too ashamed most of the time to ask a friend to come to church because they truly know you we come three times a week three times a week I don't even know how many times we come anymore three times a week three hours a week some of you a little more a lot of you a lot less but you spend more time at work for most of you realize you spend more hours at work than you do with your own family. So they truly know you better than anyone else. If I looked at one of your co-workers and says, do you think he's rooted in Christ? She's rooted in Christ. What would they say? Oh, they go to church? Oh, man. I did see him praying over there at lunch one time. No, I heard them telling dirty jokes. I heard them planning other activities. Man, I wish I knew they went to church because I would have loved to go on with them. It's hard to get involved outside of here or in here if you're not rooted. And we've got to get rooted. 
Getting rooted will change your life. It will change your, pro- your way of looking at things. Many still believe in God and have a live a life that's victory, joy, passion, full of peace. But others are planted and experiencing God's presence. And when you look at them years later, they're strong, they're connected, they're blessed. Doesn't mean life's important, but they're blessed. Their relationships are better. They're making a difference. They're joyful in hard times. They're flourishing. They're learning to flourish. Church is not just a place to go. It's a destination. It's not a building. It's people. The definition, the Greek word for church is eleucus, I can't even say it. whatever. But it means to be assembled and called out. God expected you to be assembled together but he called you out to be different. Do you realize the church ain't for the saved? It's for us to show the world when they come in something's different and something's better. Your life is a seed and it needs, in order for it to grow, it must be planted. Two principles now that I've got through four hours of introduction. When you're planted, your roots grow deep. When you're planted, at your roots grow deep. Jeremiah 17 verse 8 says, For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall she cease from yielding fruit. The largest, does anybody know what the largest trees are that grow? The redwood. I've done a little research on redwoods. It's the largest living thing on earth. It can grow up to 30 stories high and three stories wide. But the only way it will do that, it's got to have deep roots. An average redwood tree's roots reach 100 to 150 feet from the trunk. But it don't just do that. A redwood's roots are intertwined between each other to help them grow stronger, help them to hold each other up. They literally are leaning on each other and holding each other up. Each tree needs the other tree to survive and thrive. We need each other. Cannot be rooted alone. It don't matter the opposition or the trials or the doubts or the struggles that come along. It don't matter how much water doesn't happen. It doesn't matter the heat. A redwood survives because the other roots around it. Same thing in our life is when we're planted and times come hard and struggles come, we know that there's something greater in us that can get us through. I encourage everyone to find someone else that's rooted and get with them or group and intertwine your roots. Because God never called the church to be one person. And we all need each other to grow. Some roots are deeper than others. Some of you come in here tonight and your roots are so deep, it's amazing. And God bless you. Some of you come in here and you're just like that, that one seed that, you know, I got a little roots, but they haven't went far. 
And maybe I'm just a, I'm a new Christian and this ain't got time to get a stable in there. Or maybe some of you are just a seed that's laying over here that's not even in the right soil. We're in the world and not in God's Word. The ones with the strong roots need to reach out to these other two and say, oh man, I don't care what you're going through. Times are hard, I'm here for you. Let me teach you how to get deeper roots. We need each other. Nowhere through the Bible will you ever read God says you need to be alone. Often for something to happen it had to be what? Two or more. Where there's what? Two or more. God built you for relationships. God built you for a relationship with Him. Oops, sorry. He built you for a relationship with Him, but He also built you for a relationship with others. And that relationship should make help you flourish. And I'm going to say something here. If, if a relationship you're in is tearing you away from God and not building roots in your life, it might be time to kill that relationship. I'm not saying you just get away from people. Because Jesus hung out with the sinners, but he, he chose what he told to do with them. You still invite them to church, but don't allow them to dry your roots up. Don't allow them to cut your roots off. When you want to get rid of a tree, the first thing you do is cut along the roots. And the first thing a non-Christian would do is come after your roots. And they'll kill your tree. We've got to recognize when someone around us is withering and reach in and help them. But can you help someone or not? Are your roots deep enough? Have you worried about your roots? The only one who wants to believe you don't need the the devil's the only one that wants you to believe you don't need to be a church and that you don't need to be planted. He wants you to be isolated. So your roots need to grow too deep. But number two, when you're, when you're planted, your roots will produce fruit. When you're planted, you produce fruit. What is fruit? Fruit. The Apostle Paul talked about that over in the 5th chapter of Galatians when he talked about your love, joy, peace, patience, kind, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. He called it the fruits of the Spirit and it's not on your own natural fruits. It is a spiritual fruit that comes from God. In other words, when, uh, when we are connected to the spiritual vine, God produces spiritual fruit in our life. When you're connected through God's vine and love, joy, and peace comes along, you'll start leading others to Jesus. You'll start seeing people saved because you want to share that same love, joy, and peace. You can explain where your roots are at. Your roots will grow deep. Your roots will produce fruit. No matter how hot it gets, no matter how bad the drought gets, you won't be shaken. You won't be rattled. And you will still be producing fruit. God called you to be a palm tree or a cedar. He expected you to be like a redwood and help each other. It's time that we quit going to church and get planted in church. When the roots grow deep, they're not bothered by the heat. They produce fruit. Fruit is not just for you. It's for those around you.
When you start producing fruit, you'll discover the thrill of being used by God. And when you get used by God, it'll change your life. It is awesome. When you can be a blessing to someone else, you end up getting more blessed than they are. And when your roots are running deep, you recognize those situations a lot quicker and a lot easier. Like, I want to help that person. I want to get in. We need to realize that when we get saved, we're not saved from our sins. We're saved for the glory of God. So he wants us to get rooted so we can be used. I wrote a note down here that I'm going to say it anyway. I don't know no other way to deal with this. And my wife will tell you I, I've done a lot of counseling with those who have been addicts. Man, I love to see an addict come to Christ. Because let me tell you, when they get plugged in, they get plugged in. They may drive you nuts. But man, when they get connected, they want to get involved. They want their roots to run deep. I want you to realize that when you come every Sunday, every Wednesday night, When a preacher stands up here and preaches, here's your Christian cocaine right here. My wife just shook her head and said, I can't believe he just did that. Your preacher's your drug dealer. So when someone asks you, man, you want something? Tell them I got the good stuff. I got cocaine like no other. I got something to blow your mind. Teenagers about to fall out back here. Hey, y'all need to come meet my drug dealer. Preacher never let me up here after this. Come meet my drug dealer. He'll change your life. He'll change your life. For those who've been on drugs and other cocaine is one of the fastest things you can get addicted to. We need to get a people we need to get addicted to what I like to refer to as your Christian cocaine. It's time that we get addicted to this and get so rooted that we don't know what to do with our lives. That the people around us say, wow, I want that. Where's that dealer at? 350, is the address 356? Okay, I just come here. I don't even know how to give an address. That's what tracks are for y'all. My drug dealer is at 356. He don't even have to run from the law. Not yet. The government's trying to change that. He don't even have to run from the law. And when you get there and get on what he's got, you're going to start producing. You know what? You might start dealing next too. But what you start dealing in is not going to send someone somewhere else. It's going to lead them to Christ. So it's time that we get rooted, change our life, so we can change others. I can only evaluate myself tonight. And I have for two weeks. But I think we all need to take a self-evaluation tonight. And look at our roots. Do they run deep? Do you even have roots? Man, Tony, how do I get roots? How do I get roots? I don't even know where to start. But first I'm going to say this. You've got to be connected to the right tree. You've got to be connected to the right tree before you can have the right roots. A redwood don't connect to a maple tree. It just don't work. Tonight, if you're not connected to Christ and you haven't given Him your life, first start there. Because you've got to be connected to the right tree. 
And he is the tree of life. And if you noticed in the previous verses, that tree was planted by water. For something to grow requires water. And Christ is a living water. So if he's a tree of life and living water, if you're not connected to him, get connected tonight. If you are saved and connected to Christ, awesome. Awesome. And if you, again, I go back, if your roots are deep, that's great. Find a way to help someone else. I encourage you, go out and start a Bible study. I challenge teenagers all the time. You can start a Bible school, a Bible study at your school. If you have problems, you want to and have problems, come see me. We know the legal way to make it happen. Some of you want to change some of the people around you. Have a Bible study. Go to Starbucks. I know you'll, you'll confuse everyone I'm in there working. Get up a little early. Meet with some people. Have a little quiet time. We need each other. My private Bible time is great. But man, when you can meet with someone else and have a conversation, you can build off of others. It's time that we run our roots deep. The deeper our roots are, the more change we make out there. The preacher's not having revival just to have revival. Just to say that he checked a box. It's to see souls saved. That piece of paper that Mike's asking for ain't just to have a, so we can say we mailed a letter. It's so we can get others in here and connected to the right tree. Where are your roots tonight? Let's pray. Dear and precious Father, we just thank you for your many blessings, Lord.